Hello, and welcome to Be The One, starting a middle school inclusive PE class. Howdy, folks. It's Emily Clouser and Liz Metz from Frederick County Public Schools in Maryland. We are really excited to be here with you today. You're going to hear me, Emily, do most of the talking, but you'll also have Liz here when we get to the end of our session and we get to answer questions. We're looking forward to an amazing session with you all. Liz and I were both raised in Frederick County, Maryland. After years of teaching PE, we moved into the adapted PE world four years ago and became adapted PE teacher specialists in Frederick. We work as a consultative model, so we support our PE teachers in our county who are the direct service providers for adapted PE. Together, we split our county in half and support students in grades pre-K to 12. And most recently, we got our CAPE certification this year. What is Middle School Inclusive PE? Middle School Inclusive PE is a general physical education class where all students are going to follow the curriculum that the county has implemented for middle school PE. The instruction is geared towards meeting the needs of all learners. So when the PE teacher plans the lesson, they really have to look, are there students down at a second grade level all the way up to a 10th grade level? How can we meet the needs of all of those learners during planning and preparation? This course includes general education students, students with 504s, and students with IEPs. Instruction is focused more on skill development rather than a competitive whole group activity. So if the unit was football, students would focus on football skills, small-sided games, maybe flag belt games or flag football rather than playing a seven on seven or 11 v 11 football game. This class provides opportunities for all students to be leaders. And a good plan for the class is to have really clear routines and daily expectations so that all students know what the expectation is when they come into the gym and the course becomes much more productive as all students know what to expect when they enter. Here we have Dana Engelberger, a PE teacher at Oakdale Middle School in Frederick County, Maryland. She is currently in her second year of teaching inclusive PE. So when someone asks me what does inclusive physical education mean to me, it means that it's a chance for all students to be successful. And it's really awesome to see lots of different students um, engaged and being active and finding a way to be successful no matter what skill they're practicing or what fitness component they're working on. We all find a way to be engaged, have fun, and work together. Here's a little background information for our middle school inclusive PE class in Frederick. We started our first class at West Frederick Middle School during the 2018-19 school year. The PE teacher's the admin team, the adaptive PE teacher specialists, the specialized program teachers, and the guidance department work together to develop a schedule and a plan to implement the course. So when they were looking at the schedule, they wanted to find a grade level that had good role models and students that would be receptive to having a specialized program integrated into their general PE class. Prior to this course, we had most of our specialized program students just randomly being dropped into a grade level. They may have been supported by a paraeducator or maybe even the classroom teacher giving up their planning time, but the instruction was not geared to meet their needs. So many times they became upset or scared and they sat back in the corner and they did not fully participate in the class. As we said, the class was designed to include all students. They may have various disabilities, they may have no disabilities but this course is designed to meet the needs of every learner in the building. The instruction focuses more on skill development and all students will have an opportunity to work on social skills and leadership skills. Here are some evidence-based practices for inclusion. This came from an article based from the University of Virginia. There are some strategies when reducing autism spectrum disorder stereotypical behaviors in PE that includes peer-mediated support intervention and video modeling. 
One of the things that we noticed when we started this course was paraeducators felt like they were lost or they weren't needed during middle school inclusive PE. We didn't really think ahead and plan for them. So after they started to share with us that they felt like they weren't doing anything and they felt like they could be more helpful in other ways, then we started to do individual trainings in the buildings and we worked with them supporting the gen ed peers rather than the students that they support throughout the day. So they could encourage the gen ed peer to go up to the student who was maybe having an emotional breakdown or that maybe wasn't ready to participate and see if they could talk to them, have them be their partner or their buddy, and then encourage them to go participate. There are also other pieces of evidence that will be shown throughout this presentation, things like using a timer, a daily schedule, having a schedule for class, showing a visuals, lots of video modeling, any sort of gifts that you could show as well. Our current FCPS, Middle School Inclusive PE and Health classes, this is what we have right now. We have seven total middle schools that are implementing this class. One school has a challenges program. A lot of the students in that program have autism and it's a more communication-based program. So with this program last year, we worked really hard with the SEIAs and the gen ed peers to get communication cards for every single gen ed peer so that they could use the visuals to communicate with the students. And there'll be some pictures as we go through here today to show you how they use those during the class. We have five schools who have a learning for life program in their building. So typically these programs have about eight to 12 students. And then we have one school that does not have a program and they hand selected students in gen ed with 504s or with IEPs to be in this course. One of our schools, and that's the one with our, that doesn't have a program is doing an inclusive club. They have 18 students participating. It's a virtual club right now. There's one PE teacher, one paraeducator, and there's also a high school student that's helping out. Liz and I have been able to pop into this club and everything we've seen has been awesome. The students are having a great time just checking in with each other. I think that's one area that in virtual instruction they really miss is just that time to be a child, to talk to their friends. You know, they don't get to sit down and have lunch with them. They don't get to high five in the hallway. So a lot of those relationships have been hard for our students that have been home for a really long time and they miss those gen ed interactions and parents have commented about that in IEP meetings so we've done different things in the county to kind of encourage students to reach out to each other to have PE teachers open up extra times on Google Meets to encourage students to pop on and have conversations with each other where it doesn't have to be guided instruction it could just be checking in how was your weekend those types of things and the PE teacher works very closely with the specialized program teachers to support our health curriculum. There are some sensitive topics, especially as we get into eighth grade, where sometimes we opt out to have them not participate with their peers. So it's important that we support the supplementary aids by implementing them in PE class with a timer on the wall or calling out a countdown, having the peer buddies help with that countdown as well. The use of visuals and skill cues for daily instruction. Anytime a skill is being taught, any portion of a unit or a sport is being taught, it's important to provide visuals for the students. They can make connections between the picture of a ball or a picture of an athlete and understanding what skills they need to try or what they should practice. The skill cues are important because the general education students can use those. The paraeducators can also use those to help guide instruction. Every now and then, it's important to offer choice of activities. So if you have varying levels of difficulty, then students that are more skilled or less skilled can be successful by having opportunities to practice at varying levels. Communicate with paraeducators to clearly explain their role in the class. It is so important that we develop relationships with them and we keep those lines of communication open because paraeducators understand students better than most other people in the building. 
So ask questions. What colors do they like? What songs do they like? What type of music? What dances? Figure out those things to help get your students engaged and to get them to participate in your class. It's also important to explain to them what their role is during this class. Many times, Liz and I will go into a gym and we will see paraeducators sitting on the floor, maybe on their cell phone. They may be having lunch. They may be just talking to each other, doing absolutely nothing. Sometimes we'll go into a gym and the paraeducator is doing exactly what they're supposed to do. It really varies everywhere we go, but we know that that main expectation comes from you, the PE teacher. So if you can set that expectation, then they will know what to do. You also need to create a relationship with them. You know, greet them, communicate with them, don't talk down to them, ask them for help, ask what their suggestions may be for a child. All of those open lines of communication are really important with paraeducators. Continue to use that team of people that we've talked about multiple times already and use them to help you plan lessons. That's really important. The lessons should have clear structure and routines. So if every time the class comes into the gym, they're going to do their walking warm-up, their walk and talk for four minutes, that timer starts as soon as they come in, and then they're going to practice fitness ex exercises, then go ahead and have them do that. Next thing, they go into their main activity. So all of those things should be pretty clear, and they should be followed as routines every time the students come into class. It's very important to review 504s and IEPs ahead of time. If there's a disability that a teacher doesn't understand, adaptive PE teacher specialists like Liz and I or other people in your county can help with that. There's also websites online that have different suggestions for various disabilities, how to teach them, different things to try to help reduce behaviors. All of those things are important to plan ahead of time. <laughs> Incorporate multiple playing areas or add in additional equipment for small-sided games. So for instance, if there's a soccer game that's going to be played, Typically, soccer is 11 v. 11. It's not appropriate for middle school PE. Maybe a three-on-three -three game with small cones. Maybe a five-on-five -five game with three balls. Just think about how to get more students involved in the activity. That would be the main goal here. Communication tips for this class. We're going to use communication cards as often as we can. We have them saved. We have a clip of them. They can be put on a binder clip and worn. They can be worn on a lanyard, various things to do. But they should always be handy and they should be consistent with what's used in the classroom. It's important to meet with the general education students prior to the start of the school year. So maybe the first day of school, second day of school, usually you're handing out locks and lockers. You want to make sure you sit down with these students and give them an opportunity to hear what's different about this class. Why are they in middle school inclusive PE? Because the teacher chose them as leaders. They were chosen to help the other students learn. Maybe they already have relationships and they're good role models. So all of those things are important to share with them to make sure that they're in the right place. Some students may have been dumped into this class and that's not going to be appropriate for them. That's okay. But we want to know that early on so we can have them move into a different class. When speaking to students, it's very important to speak with a clear voice and a consistent speed at all times. It's also very important to provide processing time when sharing directions. Now that pause was a little bit awkward. Yes, it was. But that was time for everybody to process what's been said, possibly ask a question, maybe ask for repeated directions. As teachers, it's really important that we provide that opportunity for students. Many of them may have delayed processing, so we need to give them an opportunity to catch up with their peers. Again, we want to incorporate visuals as much as possible during instruction. And we also want to make sure that everybody, including paraeducators and peers, has access to skill cue visuals for what is being taught in that class. Next up, we have a video of Mr. Dave Kyling. He's a PE teacher at Urbana Middle School in Frederick County, Maryland. He's been teaching inclusive PE for two years. And this year, he is also teaching or supporting an inclusive club that's being done virtually. And he does not have a specialized program in his building. 
Hey guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about middle school inclusive PE and what I'm doing at Urbana Middle School in Frederick County. Um, recently, I started a new program this past school year and it allows us to bring in students of all different ability levels, our non-diploma bound students, our special ed students, some of our eighth grade leaders were able to come in and help work with the lower students as peer leaders. We had other peer on grade level students come in and it was an awesome, awesome opportunity for our PE department to kind of expand out of the normal everyday PE and focus on relationship building, skill building, and give them an environment where they could be successful in PE and not be, you know, lost in what, you know, the, the chaos of a normal PE class. Uh, one of the things that I absolutely loved about it was the relationships that our students built. We brought students in from different grade levels and we had students be able to work together with each and every student. And it really showed how a student was able to take the teaching from other students and build off of that, as well as, you know, make new friends. There's a lot more relationships came out. Students went to other uh, students' birthday parties that they never would have before. They're able to sit each with each other at lunch and become friends just outside of PE. So the socialization of our class was much, much more beneficial than what our normal PE class normally would see. One of the awesome things that we saw while we did all this too was the growth of our students and confidence. Our students became much more confident when they were able to come in with their peers and help and they're able to showcase their skills that they were learning at a pace where they were able to pick things up and they were able to work on the confidence level from the beginning of the year to the end of the year was remarkable. And what really, really I enjoyed about it all is what I learned from them. They show me that it doesn't matter if you are the best athlete, it doesn't matter if you're the best PE student, that coming in every single day with the smiles on their faces and the enjoyment of coming in, just coming into an environment where they knew they're going to be successful, always put me in a good mood, always put something on me to where when they walked in, my eyes lit up, smiling on my face, and I knew that we we're going to have a great class. So it's an amazing experience. It's an opportunity for all students to succeed. And so it's something that I would encourage every single person to partake in or at least go visit and see the benefits of such an amazing opportunity. How to implement a middle school inclusive PE program. Some of these things are things we've already touched on today, but I will review them quickly. You want to cap the size of the class. We typically say two, a two to one ratio is best. So two gen ed students to one student with an IEP or a 504. That helps when you have a student who's absent, they still have a peer buddy. So if you can't get that ratio, it's understandable, but it's also important for the PE teacher to work with their teammates so that they have a decent number of students. We don't like to see the class go over 30 students. We have becomes a little bit harder to manage with some of our middle school inclusive kits that we'll talk about and also with just general equipment for PE. It's a good idea to determine a plan for which students will follow their class into health and they're going to stay with their PE teacher who's going to work with their classroom teacher, but some schools do health differently, so it's important to make sure you include that in your planning. Setting up a long range plan is really important. And Liz and I have a lending library that's full of adaptive equipment. So we need to know when teachers want that equipment and how they wanna, how they want it distributed throughout the school year. Working with that same team of people to make sure that adaptive PE service are, services are provided, supplementary aids or 504 accommodations are met. And also making sure there's a plan for the paraeducators so they're supporting that learning. Here's a list of our middle school inclusive kits that we made in Frederick County. We have a kit for all of these different sports or units. The kit comes with equipment, comes with a lesson plan, Google Slides presentation, the curriculum standards are on there. If there's assessments, they are on there as well. So we're gonna give you an example of one, but first we're gonna show you a video. Here's a picture of some equipment that we use in the kits. Over here, this is what Liz and I have throughout our office. It is a poster that states which adaptive equipment is in each kit, and we have to scan them in and scan them out when we sign equipment in and out to teachers. 
And we have a little video about our kits that we used on Twitter. This will be available to our PE teachers, grades K all the way through high school. We're encouraging unified PA teachers to check them out, as well as anybody with gen ed or specialized programs. These kits were created to incorporate our gen ed students and their adopted PE students with voice and services to all teachers to differentiate instruction. And they're still these kits. Therefore, we have third fourth and fifth. That allows you to group your students on skill level or mix them up to put them in like a group and class. And you can just tell them what you want to take me level to do. Here we have an example of what one of our secondary inclusive kits would look like. So most of these are focused towards middle school. I'm just going to show you a few examples of the equipment and the stations. So Liz and I have these for all of those units that we showed you before. And then there's a PowerPoint available online for, on Google for our teachers to use. We also have these pages printed in color for them. You can see there's a second grade fourth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade levels available here. We also have the star, which is still an area where a child could be seated for an activity or may only have use of their upper body. Here we have the objectives, the materials. We have what we included in the kit and then what teachers can add into the kits. Again, focusing on striking with implements. This is a student learning goal. They're going to work on striking using short and long handled implements. Essential questions that came off of our curriculum. First stations hockey. So again, we have skill cue images of this. We have still images that we can use. We also have these GIFs or videos that can be shown on a Chromebook or an iPad. Here are the different things they can do striking a ball or a puck off of a poly spot, moving it forward, shooting at a goal. Here's some more images, a couple more ideas of things to do for hockey. Next one's badminton. So we're working on the serve here, various activities to do. Obviously, as they progress down, they're going to get more difficult because that's what the curriculum says. So in eighth grade, they're progressing more towards a two-on-two -two game here, and they're keeping track of score. A lot of our students may not get to that level, but that's okay. More visuals. Next one is golf. They can use various things to play golf. We could use a noodle, a golf club. We have started to purchase some putt-putt things, um, some little greens. We have some golf clubs and golf balls, and we're going to add to – our kits to include more golf, softball, baseball, batting. Then we go to tennis. 
And station six would be table tennis or pickleball, depending on what equipment's available. So again, we're still showing those different levels, different pieces of equipment they can use. And then here's some ideas for whole group activities, ways to modify the games for students. And then lastly, we would put in benchmarks and assessments here. Next thing we wanna share is a resource guide. This basically is taking all the information from the PowerPoint, put into a resource guide, which for us will be a changing document. As we have more schools participate or new activities that expand off of this class, we will add to it. So here we're acknowledging the teachers that have participated in this course for us in Frederick County, the school sites that have participated. The table of contents is here. And as we go through, you'll see there's background, goes in a little bit more detail. These are pictures from our inclusive classes. Lots of times you'll see peer buddies standing there helping. Teaching tips, communication tips. Here are the visuals for the communication rings. These rings were made for each of our students in our, um, at our School with the Challenges program. These visuals we use to show skill cues. So you pick a skill, there's usually four to five skill cues. We demonstrate those on there. And then the students can also use them to prompt and redirect students. In this image, we have a student sitting next to another student. I believe they were on uh, recumbent bikes or rowers at that time. She was asking him to pick what their next activity was going to be. So together, they were using his iPad to communicate. But she was asking him to pick the choice. So she waited patiently and eventually he did pick a choice. Here's some more information about evidence-based practices. Goes into more detail than we did in the PowerPoint. How to implement the program. 11 steps here. Again, partners working together. This is in a cardio room at Oakdale Middle. The sample letter is here. We have a sample application to ask questions to students. That's what we've expanded to from just giving them a letter. Some resources, information about the adapted kits. They're awesome. I would recommend making them for counties if you have equipment. Even if you don't have equipment, you still spend a lot of time making those resources, but teachers really like them and they're very good for a class like this. Warm-up ideas such as yoga, student-led activities, fitness, whole group, team building activities, fitness instruction, online resources. As I said, this document will be changing. You know, right now we're in virtual instruction. We haven't put a lot of information about that on here, but we probably should. Here we have health resources. These pictures are all from Inclusive Health last year. So we have students using their devices. We had students choosing what's male, what's female. Some more pictures of students in class. This sheet right here, I really like because it was for at home discussions with parents. A lot of times parents have touch questions about touching, you know, hygiene, all of those things when they start to hit puberty, especially in the middle school level. So some of these images will help with the questions and ways to kind of guide that discussion. Again, our health curriculum is followed just like our PE curriculum. We cannot stress enough that visuals are really important for the health instruction. It's important to break down the assignments even more. And we also have some examples of inclusive health here. This is a sample lesson. We did some curriculum writing one summer and we focused on different things. And we actually brought in learning for life teachers to help us break down the instruction to meet where their students are, make sure the PowerPoints were appropriate, the vocabulary was appropriate. Here we have some equipment ideas. We absolutely love these tiered hoops. You can tier them together, actually. Let's see if this video pops up for us. It's one of my favorites here. He's a rock star. And there you go. You can see we put the hoops together, made it low enough for our friend here. Here we have another basketball video from our Twitter page. And you can see we put it together it was Miss Engelberger's class that we saw earlier. So they were using our basketball kit. Here is a visual card. You can see up here pointing out the different skill cues. We have the bungee basketball, varying levels of the basketball hoop here. Here's the tiered hoop. And I absolutely loved how she looked here for hand placement on this video. She wanted to make sure she put them where they needed to be before she performed a pass. So as we finish up, we just want to let you all know that we're always here to share our resources. What we can with FCPS is share a lot. We'd love for you to share with us.
We put a lot of things on our FCPS Adaptive PE Twitter page. And throughout the year, Liz and I have been doing some professional developments or just some kind of meet and greets. We try to meet every two to three weeks for an Adaptive PE National Google Meet. And if you would like to sign up for that, you can sign up on Remind. The link is right here. So what we'll do is as we schedule meetings, we will push them out through Remind. We send the link that way as well. We try to record them as much as possible. So we understand some people are teaching at certain times. We work around our schedule. So if you're teaching at that time, we would still like for you to you know, request a recording if you want. We are going to pick people throughout the country to present on various topics. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to our discussion and answering any questions you may have.